Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a quick look at a program called CRU or Custom Resolution Utility uh, on the ROG Ally. Now it's not exclusive to the ROG Ally, but we're going to get into why it's going to be beneficial for us to use it on the ROG Ally. Well, let's take a look. So first off, I'll show you how to get this all up and running. Honestly, it's not that hard. You just download the link here, unzip it, and then you'll go into the profile uh, program there. Um, but before we kind of get really into that, I just want to quickly mention for people that aren't sure, or maybe they have like misconceptions of what VRR is. So VRR is variable refresh rate, and now this will basically just match what is being input for FPS wise, and then match it to your refresh rate of your monitor instead of being locked at 60 Hertz or whatever. Um, so now instead of going at 60 Hertz or even sometimes 30 Hertz, uh, consistently, your monitor will adapt to the in-game frame rate so if you're getting anywhere between 40 to 60 it will match it one for one up to four or sorry at least in the case of the rog ally up to 48 to 120. so it'll match it from 48 to 120 on the case of the rog ally uh, if it goes down below that it'll kick into low frame rate compensation mode so what that does is it doubles the refresh rate um, so if you're getting 30 fps it'll double it to uh, 60 hertz you're not going to get 60 fps in motion like it's not going to feel like 60 fps at all it'll feel worse than variable refresh rate um there'll be a bit of black frame insertion and you can fill the judder a little bit more um it's not going to be as bad as without low frame rate compensation however if we can bring that variable refresh rate down to 30 to 120 uh, hertz or fps that would generally be ideal and now just some misconceptions about vrr uh, some people think that it uses more battery power it doesn't uh, if anything it would save you battery life because now your monitor is not running at its maxed out 120 hertz or 60 hertz or whatever uh, if you're only getting 40 to 45 hertz or fps my apologies see that's how interchangeable it is um, if you're only getting 45 fps then you're only going to be outputting at 45 hertz on your monitor you're not going to be outputting 120 hertz so it's actually going to save you battery life in the long run now how much eh, that's kind of negligible i'm sure but Anyway, we'll kind of get into how to use the program now. All right, so once we have custom resolution utility all extracted, uh, you don't need to install anything. It is a standalone application. It's always best practice to run these things as administrator, but it probably will give you a user access control asking to make those changes anyway. Uh, but so once we have that open, now note I'm not doing this on the ROG Ally, but it will be the exact same. So there will be a string of numbers or letters here. It'll say T something, I can't remember what the ROG Ally one is, but it'll say active beside it. So you can see here, these are all the other monitors that I've ever connected to. So here's my LG uh, C1 OLED. Um, so if we go into there, um, we'll, you can see that it kind of changes things up. So when you're working on the Ally, the only thing you'll need to do is to go to edit and then go down to V rate and then change this number to 30. Now that's the lowest I've been able to push it. Um, just note that you can try to push it a little bit lower, but at that point it's like, well, if you're getting below 30 FPS, eh, well, like why are you playing the game at that point with the probably terrible frame pacing? And there might be some applications for it where if you could push it down to like 20 Hertz or something, but uh, I wouldn't try to push it that far, to be honest. It'll probably be kind of terrible in motion. Uh, but anyway, so once you set that to 30, I'm not going to do it here because I haven't done it before on my laptop and I'm not sure what is safe and what's not. Uh, but you'll just hit OK and then nothing will happen then. Um, so what you'll have to do is just hit OK on that and then you're going to hit Restart 64. It's going to disconnect and then reconnect your displays and then it's going to apply those things. I'm not going to do it now because it does disconnect OBS and cancel the recording. Um, so what will happen is you will hit the Restart 64 your screen will kind of go black and then come back maybe two to three times. And then if it does apply, you'll see a message box saying, okay, uh, wait 15 seconds or whatever, and it'll revert back to your previous set settings or hit okay, uh, exit if their settings are fine. Um, as well, there is like a factory reset mode. So if you hit F8, that's how you can factory reset it, uh, like to the default uh, resolution settings, uh, just in case like you push it too far. But but honestly, I've seen many other reports of people pushing it up to 30 hertz or pushing it down to 30 hertz for VRR uh, and with no issue at all.
Now, you might be asking, are there any potential downsides to this? And technically, yes. Uh, so a lot of manufacturers will A, out of just stability and image clarity and everything, they will cap their frame rates or their uh, refresh rates, my apologies, uh, typically to about 40 hertz at the lowest, all the way up to whatever the top end of the refresh rate is. Uh, some manufacturers will have it to all the way from one until up until whatever their max refresh rate is, but it's few and far between. Um, and those would typically be the OLED displays that would be doing that. Now, uh, if you do push the displays down lower uh, in terms of hertz, um, you can get a little bit of artifacting on TN panels or in some cases LCD panels as well. So you kind of minimize that by having the low frame rate compensation on or LFC instead of the VRR. So the low frame rate compensation on the ROG Ally kicks in from 30 up until 48 and then 48 hertz up until 128 hertz is handled by VRR. Anything below 30 hertz is it's just straight I mean it's straight trash basically. Um you're yeah, it's trash. It's not being handled by VRR or low frame rate compensation. You're just getting your straight refresh rate of your monitor and you're just getting a solid like 25 or whatever varying refresh rate put onto it uh but anyway so yeah there is a potential disadvantage to it but honestly in my experience and from what other people have been reporting online uh it's honestly there hasn't really been any complaints and people have been pushing it down a little bit lower than 30 hertz but honestly i would just leave it at 30 hertz and kind of call it quits there that's just my opinion though Now, I just wanted to show what happens when you're connected to a monitor and how it looks different. So down here, this is where your HDMI resolutions and stuff are controlled. So if you want to change, say for instance, my refresh rate of my LG OLED, I would click on the detailed resolutions here and then click edit. Now we can see here that the FreeSync range is from 40 to 120 hertz, and that's the default range for the FreeSync or the default refresh rate uh, range for the LG C1 OLED that I have. Now, if you want to change that, you can go just into edit, and then you can even, this is where the overclocking comes into play and how you can kind of boost it maybe potentially above your maximum refresh rate. But here is also where you can set the lowest. So now typically with OLEDs, yeah, you can get down pretty darn low. On my desktop, I have it set down to like 20 hertz, 20 to 120 hertz, and yeah, it's perfect. Um, so yeah, that's how you can change your monitor settings. Obviously your monitor name will differ, but always just look for the active, whatever's active, it'll be the actively connected display. So even if you have the ROG Ally connected to a monitor, it'll have this one active as well as like your LG TV or Samsung or whatever device brand that you have. And honestly, that's it. Uh, there's not really much else to say. Like I said, I'll try to keep it nice and quick. I just wanted to give some of the explanations on why and how, things like that. I don't just like to give out, okay, here is how you do it, and then just leave it at that. So to end things off, I'd just like to thank my channel members, uh, Roy Watney, I believe that's a typo again, uh, Roy Wayne, I think, or Rustland, uh, Darkstar, Amoa, Rico1217, and Joey VR. Thank you very much for being channel member, guys. I really appreciate that. Um, it means more than you'll ever know. Um, as well, thank you to everyone else for taking the time to watch and interact or share, do whatever you guys do, uh, dislike, like. It doesn't really honestly matter to me as long as it helps somebody out. So thanks for watching, and I hope everyone has a great day.